Hey guys and welcome back. Today, I just wanted to make a quick video to walk you guys through how you can utilize Microsoft Fabric to connect to your on-premises data sources. So, let's get right to it. So, I have a SQL Server 2022 instance running here in my on-premises environment. On this actual instance here, I have one database named AdventureWorks DW. 2022 and I need to get some tables here loaded into a Microsoft Fabric environment so that I can do some visualizations with that data and long term I may want to use this actual data so that I can train and deploy machine learning models to support my predictive analytics goals. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over here really quick to my Fabric environment here and I am going to launch the data engineering experience here. And I want to make sure that I am in the correct workspace. So I'm gonna come into my AdventureWorks workspace. And then the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to create myself a lake house so that I can actually bring my on-premises data into this new lake house here. So I'll just call this AdventureWorks Lake House. And then hit the create button and we'll allow that to create all right so now that my lake house is ready the next thing that i'm going to need to do is create myself a on-premises data gateway so if we come up here to the settings tab and then come down to manage connections and gateways you can see that for my on-premises data gateways i don't have one created yet so that's the next step that we're going to need to do so i'm going to come back here to my sql server machine and I'm just going to start up my Edge browser here. And then I'm going to navigate to a page where I can actually download and install my on-premises data gateway. And once you're brought to this page here, it gives you a good overview here of the requirements for you to install the actual gateway and just a brief overview here of what your different options are. So you can install your gateway in standard mode or personal mode. Personal mode is more so just for when you plan to utilize it with the Power BI service only. But for our use cases today, we're gonna go with the recommended option, which is going to be the standard mode. So. I'll just scroll down here just a little bit and there is a link right here for me to download the standard gateway. So I'm just going to click on that link and wait a few moments while this downloads. And once it's ready for me, I will click on the open file link and then we can start to go through the installation process. So I will just leave the location here as the default and click to accept the terms and then click on the install button. And then the next thing that we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to give our gateway a email address. So for this, you want to use an address tied to one of your Azure AD users that's going to have access to do things inside of your Microsoft Fabric environment. So I will just paste my username here. And then I will hit the sign in button. And then I will enter my password as well. Then it is going to ask me for the multi-factor authentication. So I will just confirm this really quick off screen. All right, so all of that is good. So now on this next page here, I want to choose to register a new gateway on this computer. So I'll leave the default and I'll click next. And then I'm going to give my data gateway a new name. So I'll just call this my on-prem gateway. And we are not going to add this to a cluster as this is the very first gateway. Then I will just give it a recovery key. Then I hit the configure button. And that is all that we are going to need to do here. So my new gateway is now online and it is ready to be used. So I'm just going to click on the close button here. And then I'm going to come back over here to my fabric environment. And then I'm just going to refresh this page once more so that we can make sure that my on-premises gateway is actually registered and showing now. And as we can see, here's my new gateway. I will click on the status button here. 
and I can see that my gateway is online. So we are ready to use it now. So the next thing that I want to do now is I want to come over to the data factory experience here. And we have two options here. We have data flows, gen twos and data pipelines. So at the time of this recording, the on-premise data gateway cannot be used with data pipelines. It can only be used with data flows gen two. So for our use case today, we're just going to create ourselves a new data flow gen two. So I will click on this and then I'm going to click on the get data button here and I am going to choose SQL Server database option here. And then I'm just going to pass in the name of my SQL Server machine. And the database that I'm going to be connecting to is my AdventureWorks DW2022. We're going to create a new connection. I'm going to choose my data gateway here. Then I'm going to leave the authentication type as Windows. And then for the username, I'm just going to pass in my work group name, SQL Server 2022. And my username is T Hill. And then I will put in my password here and click the next button. And it is now going to attempt to authenticate me to my data source. And as we can see, everything worked just fine and I can now access my own premise data source here. So I'm just gonna pick and choose um, a few tables here that I want to load into my lake house. So I'll just go with my dim customer table, maybe the dim product table, and let's go with the fact internet sales. So I'll just choose these three tables here and then I will click the create button. And then once my tables are loaded here, I'm just gonna make a few transformations here just to kind of clean some things up and get rid of some things that I don't need. So I'm gonna get rid of these record and table references here. So I'll just choose those three and click on the remove columns button. And then I'll come to my DM product table and once again, I am going to remove these record and table columns here. And then for my fact internet sales table, I'm going to do a couple of things here. So the first thing that I want to do is find all of the columns here that have the currency data type. And I'm just going to change all of these to decimal type just to make sure that there's no issues when I load this data into my lake house. So there's a couple of more here. Just change all of these to decimal. And I think that's all for my currency types. And then once again, I'm just going to get rid of these columns here. All right, so we are good. So the last thing that I need to do is for each of my tables here, I need to set my destination for each of these. So I'm just going to click on this little plus button down here. And then I'm going to choose the lake house option here. I'll hit next on this screen. And then I'm going to expand my AdventureWorks workspace and choose my AdventureWorks lake house. I will leave the table name as Dim Customer. And then on this page here, you're given a option here to choose whether or not you want to append the actual data if the table already exists or do you want to replace the actual data. Since my tables will all be brand new, it really doesn't matter here, but I'll just leave it as the default for replace. Then I'll just do a quick scroll down my mapping list here just to make sure that everything is good and looks good. So I will hit the save option on that. And then I'm just going to repeat that process once more for my product table and my internet sales table. All right, so now that those steps are done, last thing that I need to do here is just to publish my data flow gen two. So I will just click on the publish button here. Then it brings me back to my workspace page and we can see my data flow one here as I didn't change the name for it, but that's okay. So the publishing process is in progress now. So we'll just give this a brief moment. And now we can see that the data flow is actually refreshing now. So 
I'll just click on the ellipsis here, look at the refresh history, and we'll just give this a brief moment here while the data refreshes and loads into my lake house. All right, so it looks like my data flow refresh ran just fine with no issues. It took a little bit less than one minute to complete. So I will close this out. And now let's go back into my lake house here. I'll just do a quick refresh here. And we can see my three tables have all been loaded into my lake house here. So we'll take a quick look at each one just to make sure everything looks good and my data is all here. All right, everything looks good there. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to change from my lake house view into my SQL endpoint view. And then once I'm into this view here, I'm gonna go into my data model tool so that I can create my data model and create my relationships between my tables here. So I'll just move my product table over here. And then I am looking for my product key here. And I want to create a relationship with my fact table. And then I want to create a relationship with the customer table using the customer key. All right, so now my relationships are actually in place. So now at this point, I can start to do things such as create visuals. So let's just say I wanted to create myself a quick report really quick. And let's just say, just to do something really, really quick here, let's actually expand our product table and let's take our English product name here. And then I'm gonna come down to my fact internet sales table and let's just use the sales amount as well. We can create ourselves a quick visual here and whoops let's just expand this a little bit and let's just say instead of this type of view i want to create myself a stacked bar chart and just like that we're able to create a quick visual using the data that we brought from our own premise environment into the microsoft fabric environment and now that our data is also in the lake house now we could also do things such as jumping over to the data science experience where we could then do things such as create and train models there that we could then use for predictive analytics to predict what future sales may look like for each of our products. But we will save that part for a later video. So that's all for today, guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. Until next time, guys. Peace.